Keeping Warm in the Viking Age, The Craft of Gnarl Binding. Long, harsh winters would mean that survival and keeping warm was a paramount concern for many people during the Viking Age, as it was throughout many periods of our ancient past. The key to this regarding Viking Age clothing and accessory garments is the thickness and layering of these items. Most textile fragments from this period are made from flax, which is turned into linen, or wool fibre, which is spun into varying thicknesses of yarn, ready to be woven into fabric or used in a craft like null binding. The archaeological evidence surviving for wool for this period suggests that for the most of the fibres, they tend to be very dense, similar to the fibres of the Shetland and Icelandic sheep breeds of today. These dense fibres help in the making of warm, durable items. The Shetland wool variety, in particular, has small fibrous hooks within the fleece. This means that when these dense fibres are spun or gnarl bound with, the wool naturally interlocks, providing extra warmth and durability. Fleece would be hand spun on a drop spindle into yarn. It could be plied for extra strength or even kept at varying thicknesses of a worsted type weight of yarn. The choice was very much down to the individual crafter, even in the Viking Age. There are examples of naturally undyed yarn that have been found, but also yarn that has been dyed with plants like weld, woad and madder to give bright vivid colours of yellow, blue and red. Adding mordants such as urine and alum can also make the colour more vivid and last longer on the textile. Of course, being able to access certain colours and mordants can denote how wealthy an individual may be. During the winter months, it would be expected that many individuals would be wearing an under-tunic or kirtle made of linen, with an over-tunic or kirtle made of wool. A woollen hood also may be worn over it, or a long woollen cloak or coat. These layers of natural fibres are going to lock the body warmth in. Furthermore, you may decide to wear items to give warmth to the extremities of the body. An arl-bound hat under the hood to keep you even warmer, along with mittens and socks to protect your fingers and toes from frostbite. Nile bending, nulla binding, nile binding, needle binding are but a few ways of saying single needle or nile knitting. It is the Viking Age form of the early type of knitting and the forerunner of modern knitting and crochet. It is the way our historical ancestors used to take natural woolen fibres and craft them into items that would help ensure their survival through the winter months. Items such as hats, socks, gloves, headbands and mittens have all been found across the British Isles, Northern Europe and the North Atlantic in preserved archaeological form. The actual craft of Nile binding itself has over 200 different types of stitches that have been discovered across the world. The basic premise is based on a single loop with which you pass a bone needle through. The style and thickness of your finished textile can depend what stitch you use and how tight you pull the stitch. The most common stitches used when recreating nile bound items from the Viking period tend to be the Langet or single Danish stitch, York stitch or Oslo stitch. These stitches do range in difficulty, for sure. However, the reason we have so many different types of stitches from the Viking Age alone is most likely due to the regional variation and the passing down of this practical skill. Some stitches you use your thumb to guide the needle through. Sometimes you create multiple loops to create a double or a triple stitch in one go, speeding up the textile making process. In the Viking Age, you would sit down with someone and they would show you how to nail bind. It would become a learnt skill that may develop different nuances as the craft changes, as the items change. Even if a stitch is messed up, we have got examples of textiles where the crafter has simply just turned the item inside out and started again, using what would be considered the reserve or the back of the textile. Null binding is a very tactile and intuitive craft. If you make a mistake, you're basically creating a whole new stitch. 
It's meant to be an adaptable and unique craft depending on who's using it, but with the ultimate aim of warmth. There is no evidence to suggest that this is purely a female craft during the Viking Age. Men, women and children would and could be taught this skill, just as with many survival crafts that were taught in the homestead during this period. There are, of course, examples of social variations, depending on status. There has been a surviving gold silk nailbound cap, which has been discovered in Germany, which is said to have belonged to St Simeon in the 10th century period. It acted as a reliquary item to cure pilgrims of headaches, and was used all the way through into the 13th century. Other discoveries have been made, such as a silk tablet woven and gold nailbanded headband, or hlad, found preserved in Denmark, showing that this everyday craft is being used by the elite to show their status and wealth by nail binding using materials such as gold and silk. The craft and technology of the people living in the Viking Age is well practiced and taught by those who immerse themselves in living history. Craft reenactment or experimental archaeology enables insights into how to make these items from the past. Whether you're an academic, seeking deeper insights into the social implications and development of such a craft, or a member of the public who wants to just understand how the craft is done and give it a go yourself, null binding is a skill that throughout the world has a wonderful use. In the modern world, it can also be used. It can benefit everyone to learn something new, make something yourself, and share that with like-minded people is a wonderful mentality when attempting to bring archaeology and heritage back to life again.